Andy James. Thanks for having me, mate. Hey, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. So getting we're... into the swing of being out in Europe all yeah. of a sudden. All of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, we are in Munich at the Olympia Halle München in Germany. Uh, touring, Megadeth and Five Finger. Yeah. So tell me about it. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I was um, I only met like Zoltan probably uh, September, October last year. Um, right. Just via Instagram like and stuff. A few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Charlie, he's just joined. Well, I say just joined. He's been with Death Punch a while now. Mm -hmm. He was the drummer for Scale the Summit in Angel Vivaldi on um, uh, the Guitar Collective tour that I did in, I in in the US. How is the touring like for you? Yeah, is I it mean, the I, first time like doing a big tour uh, on this scale. Yeah, this definitely. Scale? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've I've done like you know. Uh, UK yeah, tours. I've mm -hmm. I've been around uh, America, um, Europe. I've been to like China and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, you know, I've toured yeah. and been on buses. You know the stuff. clinics and stuff. And yeah, it yeah, a lot. Yeah. And uh, how do you feel like playing in big stage? What's the difference for our friends here, guitar players? The difference of playing at home or doing a video on YouTube that you can you have multiple chances, right? And <laughs> and compared to a a big stage and you have one chance to do it right how how does that feel i mean it's a, it's a it's a different sort of like scenario because like obviously i mean like i've done a lot of live playing and stuff like that i've yeah. done a lot of like studio stuff um i think the main thing is with this one it was slightly more stressful because i had like three days maybe to wow. learn 17 songs yeah three days to half learn the a rehearsal whole and a sound yeah, check yeah. and it was like with Mega Death it was a little bit like this, but I had a month, right? You know, before the first show, but two days rehearsal, yeah, and big festivals, <laughs> big so stage. So I think the biggest thing hard, is, you know? yeah, I mean, you have to be like professional, and you don't want to let other people know that you're freaking out and like <laughs> that you might get up on stage in front of ten thousand people and, and make a couple of mistakes. You go, yeah, that's fine, I got this, don't worry about it. Do you have any mental? Thing exercise or something that to bring you, you know, like focus or I, I, honestly, you know, I not just, to I feel, play wrong chords or you know. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, normally, um, normally for me, like preparation is the only thing that really kind of peels me off the ceiling. You know, like I mean, I, I got I got up on stage with these guys and I was like probably ninety percent. 95% there, like with the songs. Like all the stuff. songs, all memorized. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a few things that I didn't know about, like um, just on stage, like, you know, walk offs, this kind oh, of thing. Oh, yeah. We yeah, didn't yeah, have a yeah, chance yeah, yeah. to sort that well, out. But that's a different thing. That's the next thing. First, first, you learn the chords. Yeah. The, the, the structure, songs. the songs. Yeah. Then you go for the solos. That's the way I see it. I don't know if you do the same. Like, first, like the structure of the song. Yeah. So don't start playing the verse before the court, yeah know, yeah do some uh, i mean i suppose it helped it helped as well because like i was already familiar with the songs anyway oh being, you knew the songs of okay. the band so okay, like, cool but yeah that's i mean much easier that's much easier yeah yeah i mean i don't want to play like you know downplay jason's playing over because like he's a great guitar player mm -hmm. you know the, the some of the stuff he plays and you know it definitely was challenging it wasn't like to just go oh yeah that's easy i'll be able to do that you know no problem and you know obviously when you're trying to I mean, you know this as well, obviously, mm -hmm. doing with Megadeth and stuff like that. You're coming into a, a band where the style is so established yes. with, like, the band. I mean, obviously, I suppose, like, Mike Friedman being the most yes. um, associated guitar player mm -hmm. for the length of time. So, obviously, you mm -hmm. come in and, you know, you, you've got that sound down to a T, do you know what I mean? You know, with all the kind of slurred half bends mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, all yeah. that sort yeah. of stuff, which yeah. is not easy to do. It's you know not easy I mean? at all, yeah. So, but I like it, so, so yeah, yeah. it's something that... I like well, that's lot. the thing, you know. It's a challenge to try and stay as true as you can to the, uh -huh. to the stuff. But yeah, it's definitely different stepping out in front of that many people um, yeah. than say when you're at home and you can just be in front of the camera. Yeah. But I do get nervous doing cameras work at home of, as well of course. because it's weird when you've got a camera there and you're and you're recording yourself. You almost feel like it's going out live for uh -huh, some reason. Uh -huh, I don't uh -huh. know why. Like, but you have the second chance. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's live. Yeah. You have to wait for the next show. <laughs> for the second chance. Yeah, you know? and you're only as good as your last <laughs> performance, right? You know, exactly, yeah, exactly. But then it's all over YouTube because people take yes, videos. Yeah, yeah. And that was the other thing that was like, for me, I was like, oh my God, you know, I hope, you know, a band like this is, uh, I mean, essentially they took me on my word that I said I'd be able to do it. 
mm-hmm. flew all the way up, fl- flew all the way over here. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could have just gone, yeah, yeah, it'd be fine, gone up on stage, and it'd just been a complete car crash. You know what I mean? No, and then it's, obviously it's, it would have just been it's all great. Over YouTube. You know, I've been watching uh, the show, and uh, so you you learn the structure of the song, then the solos, and then you have the stage moves and yeah. ins and outs. Which so by the third show, I kind of figured out the, yeah. the intros, the endings, when we yeah. walk off, all that kind of stuff. When yeah. not to go near the pyro. There's been one, the there's pyro. Been, yeah, there's been one moment where I sort of turned yeah, around, I was walking the, towards Charlie's drum yeah. riser and the thing was going off. Oh yeah, like a but, Michael Jackson kind of you know, <laughs> burning your hair or something. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, hopefully no. that's not gonna happen. And then you have to learn like so the structure, the solos, the ins and outs and pos- stage positions, right? Maybe. You guys don't there's a few, yeah, the, yeah, there's a know. few songs where like Zoltan, for the, example, come over okay. um, and see that's the thing, like once you learn everything that you're meant to be doing, you you then become like aware of yes, your peripheral vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I notice you guys when you know when you're doing stuff, you obviously have bits where both you and Dave come back. Oh and, yeah, yeah. So and, like, it's all mapped out. It's and, all mapped out. Yeah. I know like the verse one of that song, I know where I'm gonna be. Yeah. Everything and then you you, can, you have to interact interact with the public to with the audience yeah you know, exactly as well I mean and know, then the it, play is just an extra it's like a net it has to be so natural that you don't think about it yeah so you can be aware of the whole it's almost thing. The, the thing that you you should be worried about the least exactly the plane yeah. right yeah totally so you get up there you have all this other stuff to remember it really isn't easy like trying to make it look like you're a cohesive unit as a band yeah. like. I see like you have the moment that you practice, which is, I want to talk about that. Yeah. Practice. The, one, the moment that you're playing is like backing tracks or having fun at home. Yeah. Or the performance, which is a different, is a different game because you have to practice a lot so you can play well. Mm-hmm. And then the performance is when you don't, you don't think no, you just forget. And then you forget because yeah. you know so well. Yeah. Then now you're you're ready to look to the audience. You can enjoy. You can, you know, have the peripheral yeah. vision and yeah, interact yeah. with the other musician. Interact with the text. If something goes wrong, you oh, can yeah. keep yeah. playing and tell the monitor guy that you need a <laughs> need a little bit more guitar or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. So the playing has to be so. Uh, well memorized in the subconscious. In the, uh, some, yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> I f- I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting there now. I mean, like my daily, I mean, you mentioned practice, like my daily thing now is I'll, I'll play through the set just once. I'll have my laptop headphones and I'll just go through the, the set the, the set, set, and the, do that. Yeah, and go it's like 90 game. minutes? Uh, yeah, something yeah, like something like that with, with all like the sort of stops and stuff. I have it like marked out, so I just... Even the easy songs? Like, goes, yeah, go through the, the, because it's more to, to... Well, the trouble is, is like when you get comfortable, it's the easy shit that you fuck up. That's the thing, it's not <laughs> the harder stuff. Oh, this it's is like, so easy, a better oh, Yeah, and that's it, and your mind major. wanders to what you're going to have like uh, in catering after the gig, and then that's it. <laughs> One false move, you know, and yeah, it, it yeah, yeah. comes tumbling down. So you kind of, yeah, yeah, you yeah. still have to maintain a level of com- yeah. concentration, even though, it, you know, with every gig. I mean, you know what it's like when you're on tour. I mean, yeah, ten gigs into a tour, you can do it with your eyes shut. Yeah. You know, but exactly. it's just repetition every day. But yeah, yes, yeah. yesterday I, 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 I played. Uh, the, there's a song called Trust. Yeah, it's not a difficult solo, by, but but I. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't play right. I know, but I mean, you know. You and then you know, because I start thinking about something else. Yeah. And oh, then, that's coming up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny, because uh, Keaton, the guitar tag, was his birthday. Yeah. He's thirty years old. So I was like, playing, man. I when I was thirty, I was thinking when I was thirty, and I remember my birthday was I was in Taiwan. Right. So I was kind of oh Taiwan. I was start. To remember, you know, remember all the, the the that day in Taiwan, and then during the soul, and then of course like you, I mean you, like, yeah, <laughs> given given the occasion, like you're in a stadium in front of that many people, and you're thinking about about <laughs> like Taiwan, being my birthday. Else. In, in Taiwan. Yeah. <coughs> Anyways, yeah, that happened yesterday, so today's not gonna happen. No, yeah, but that's the thing, like. I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, like there is, there has been times where I've been on tour and I've made a mistake. Then I've been conscious of it. Second night, I've made the same mistake, and then you start learning the mistakes. That can be a thing as well. When oh. you start, le- you start un, 
And then you start repeating the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Because, because yeah. you've learned that that's coming up. You've learned that you've made a mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to try and sort of unlearn the mistakes to. It's to like you, get you're the songs. you're afraid of that part of the yeah. song that it would be. That's the feeling. You are afraid of oh, this part's coming up. I will, yeah. I'm not gonna play <laughs> right, and then of course. I mean, this is a great it's insight. So, it's it's such a mental thing, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you know, watching this probably don't, or have never realised that this this is the sort of stuff that goes through your head, like. Yeah. You know. Do you think you're? Yeah. You know. Playing. Because we're only human at the end of the day. Like something's gonna go wrong at some point. I have a question. As we were talking about performance, but I believe that before to get to that level that you don't think and then you can even think about other stuff yeah. while playing a, a difficult solo or you are afraid of a difficult part so how is your practicing routine and mainly how did you do in the past what you to mean? be a, such a great guitar player <laughs> wow. you know what you know like okay the young uh, Andy James. I don't know. Like it's been really weird for me, like over my course of my life, because I just I don't do anything like in a in a regimented way. Okay. You know, so I don't sit down and go right. I'm going to do 15 minutes of this, or alternate picking, or 15 minutes sweep picking, or or whatever it is that that some people's practice routines mm -hmm. end up being. Mm -hmm. um, I've normally just heard something cool and gone. I want to learn how to do that, and just spent all my time doing it until I feel like I've got it to where I'm. I feel like it's close to what I've heard. Okay. And I just did that with pockets of things over the years. Like, so I never really fully learned whole songs. It was always just like, oh, that's cool. Like a lick know. or a yeah. solo? Yeah. And I Tell me you were like the first one that you remember that you spent hours and hours to be able to play. Probably... Um, Probably something by Petrucci, I'd Petrucci? say, or like yeah. Paul Gilbert or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of that stuff. You know, like the scales and, and knowing the outlay of like the neck and everything didn't come until much later. You know, I had like really? pockets of things that I knew. I see like some bl some blind spots there. Kind yeah, of well, well, yeah, that's the thing. Yes. Like when, when I first some... started playing pentatonics, I'd be first position here, and then I knew the first position was up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So I just go between the two and just yeah, yeah. leave all this section of the neck out in the middle. And then, you know, you'd slide up and go, oh, okay, that's fine. I, that's obviously a, a nice Well, but position. I believe if you're learning Petrucci solo, probably you have to know the whole neck. Because well, yeah, but again, all over the not really, because no. like I just sort of, it, it, it's weird, but like when you look at the, the guitar, like logically, you just sort of, when you hear the notes, you, you try and play them in the most logical way that you think that it's probably being played. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, this is before the days of like YouTube and having yeah, like, of course, know, yeah. super accurate. So all the all the like DVDs that. or VHS. Yeah, but not even having that. So like having to sit down and, and listen to stuff, mm -hmm. you start to figure out, you know, scale shapes and patterns without knowing what they are because you're hearing the notes. And if you've uh -huh. got a good like relative pitch, which I'm, I'm okay. guessing I I must have had to like work mm -hmm. this stuff out. Um, you know, it starts to just make sense like that. And then I feel like with me, because I did try and learn theory and stuff like that, but it didn't really make any sense until I'd done a lot of physical work on the guitar. Right. And then it made sense when someone went, oh yeah, so I was like, oh right, okay, so if that's that scale shape, and that's that one, and that's that one. And that's the sure, name, or yeah, then yeah. you start connecting the you dots. You fill in the gaps with the yeah. scales that you don't know, and then you learn these positions, and then you realize that everything on the guitar is like inked interlocked mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know one one scale end or one scale shape ends and the next one kind of tags yeah, yeah. from that okay i want to learn that solo because it sounds great mm. and how many hours would you try to play that solo per a day i don't know again i never clock watched like so yeah but I, you I, know like i was like oh, right i'm gonna put in eight hours today you know sometimes it'd be like i'd start in the daytime and it just become night, and you just keep going. So hours Sometimes and hours even and hours. toilet breaks would be like an inconvenience. You just take the guitar with you, <laughs> sit on the toilet, carry on. Something I never did on. in my life, and I don't understand <laughs> how people can do it. <laughs> I don't know. I, to be honest with you, I think like when you're, uh, you know, when you're in love with something or obsessed with yeah, something yeah. so much, you just, you know, f for me it was like, you know, because I never started out thinking, oh, I'm going to do music for a career. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. You know, stand mm -hmm. on stage and and do all of that. For me, it was more something that I found something that I could I could do and I understood on some kind you of level that I didn't at. know where I understood it but oh. yeah you know um, and I, I like sorry I like this word obsession yeah because 
every great guitar player that you meet, they have this, their this obsession to be yeah. good at something, in, in, the, in our case, to be good at playing scales up and down and arpeggios and sweep picking and all that. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, this kind of a obsession. And then, I don't know, how old were you when you start, when you had this obsession to play, you know, without counting the hours? Because when well, you don't count the hours, it's because you're enjoying, you're yeah, that's fun. The thing. And then you just do it. I mean, I literally don't have any other interests in my life, really, apart from, you know, watching films or something. But yeah. Everything else is music based, whether it be, you know, recording, mixing, or just practicing, playing, or, you know, writing music, you know, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So everything that I do surrounds, is, is surrounded by, uh, you know, doing music and, music. and, and, and guitar. Else, really. yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, I don't know, I mean, I was 12 when I started, but I didn't really start discovering these players that would probably shape my, my own direction of where I wanted to go until I was about 15, 16. 15, 16, well, same as me. Yeah. yeah, when I was 16, I just, in, in the same year, I discovered pretty much the whole the shrapnel, whole that no, catalogue, yeah. uh, Dream Theatre, uh, you know, like Zach Wilde, all of these guys that... At the same time, like... Yeah, I, like, like, and you can imagine, like, the mind is just completely blown with all this mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. Having only really been listening to, you know, Guns N' Roses records and a little bit of Joe Satriani here and there, and, uh -huh. um, and a bit of, like, Nuno Betancourt and stuff, to yeah. suddenly be, be, like, thrown into all these other players that I had no idea existed and all this stuff. I remember the first time I heard Malmsteen, I was just like... I, How old were you? I, well, so like yeah. seven, yeah, uh, 16, 16, oh, so 16, 16 yeah, 15, yeah. 15, 16. So all of that I, I discovered at one age. And then from oh, then right. I was like, right, okay, I've got my work cut out for me here because I've got a lot of stuff to get through. Yeah, yeah. But this is the thing. How I cut that process down is I didn't learn like whole songs because there's like... In a lot of guitar songs and stuff, there are like arbitrary things that, you know, you don't need to get good at because later on you'll probably get good at. But there'll be a certain technique or a certain, you know, section of a song that you think is like really cool. And I, I would just kind of learn, learn that. that. And then I'd go to another guitar player that I liked and then I would I would uh, take that, that section and, and learn that. So then I suppose over the years, a lot of my playing ideas and stuff have just been an amalgamation of all my favorite parts of like different players that I've been into over mm -hmm, the years and mm -hmm, kind of just mm -hmm. meshed it together and then trying to make some to have your own style flow. because of that yeah I guess so yeah of course, you know, no, like, of course uh, it's totally I mean the how more you, different like, influences you have yeah you know you're gonna create your own thing because did you kind of do the same thing or yes but I yes but I did have the discipline with me a little right. bit, you okay. know, like the counting, the, the time, yeah. uh, for a short period during the day. And that's what I, I, I tell people to do, actually. Oh, in <laughs> essence. Know, to, uh, because, and it, I want to know, you, you might, maybe you did something like that, because when you get a solo, you're not trying to play the song, you're not trying to play um, just having fun with that. Mm. You're just getting, okay, I like this. Arpeggio, arpeggio sequence, let's yeah. say, and then you get that, and then probably you okay. Let's break down in parts, and then you play slower, and you figure out the best way to play that arpeggio. Yeah. Maybe it's like the the guitar player that composed that. Maybe yeah. it's a, your own way, but you want to play it at the same speed, so you figure out how to do that. Mm. And in a way, you kind of having a very good discipline to develop your pages, yeah. you know, and if you, if you do that with several different solos that have our pages, yeah. and then you have a bunch of good exercises for yeah. that specific technique or pages, yeah, just work and then that. you do another one for sweep picking, uh, let's say, or whatever, legatos from the guitar players that are the masters yeah. of legatos, and then you have a bunch of pieces of solos that has legatos, and right. then after a while, you know how so you've built you've built up this whole like library of stuff in different techniques yeah, that you can yeah you can I think that's through. the way I did because it never I was never into like learning the whole song as well. no no yeah. Yeah, yeah you know so I like this and then that was the same but I was okay trying to break it down in a way that those songs or those piece of uh, licks mm. were exercises yeah right and then I, I even could create exercises from that yeah yeah sequence and then, yeah, then, then I, I would 
but then I would be a little bit more disciplined because I would know the BPM, the yeah. metronome, yeah. the speed, yeah. and I, I, I would know the original song. So I knew, I knew a goal, I had a goal. Yeah. So let's say, um, I don't know, maybe too many notes from uh, Steve Morse, it's like okay, yeah. uh, 140 BPM, 150 BPM, like alternate picking our faces. Uh, yeah. You know, so I knew that, oh, okay, that's the goal because you cannot play faster than that, right? <laughs> so did you ever try and do that? Like go, well, that's the goal, but I'm going to see if I can go like five or 10 BPM past that doing so, the same thing. <clears throat> So that's what I, uh, I, I have a name for that with the out of the plateau, because the thing is, um, okay, let's say you're, you're, you're learning. So the 140 is like way too fast for you. Yeah. So maybe you'll try 100, mm -hmm. 105, and then you yeah, build speed, do it. right? Yeah. And then one day you might play 140, but that's not the limit. You can try. Yeah, and you feel that you, you can kind you of can go, yeah. further. Yeah. But even, even if the song is 140 and you're able to do 100, you have always to push to the 105, mm. because otherwise you're going to be playing 100 BPM for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have a moment to build the, the technique so you can push your limits all the time. Yeah. So one day you can play as fast as any other guy. Yeah. You know? And to a certain extent, because at some point you might uh, might be into more composition or more different kind of techniques as well, yeah, instead yeah. of being like the Guinness Book of uh, you know yeah, yeah. Know, you I mean, know what I mean. That, like, but it's there's a point where it stops being musical. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So which is interesting what you say about taking those parts that you like out of other guitar players' things and making exercises out of them, because I should, mm -hmm. I, I suspect they're probably you know quite musical. And I always think that like. I mean, this is why I did the same thing, because it always kept me excited. Mm -hmm. I never got bored of, you know, just playing, you know, because that whole, like, spider exercise, we're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that chromatic yeah, 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 yeah. thing, it's, like, yeah. it's so pointless, other than just, just separate your fingers, but, you know, mm -hmm. I, 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 my attention span is, is terrible anyway, so yeah. if it doesn't buzz me musically, I'm just not going to bother with it, you know. I mean? Yeah, the way I see it is, like, some exercises... Like let's say the spider exercise or like a chromatic yeah. one two three four, to do a little bit, just to be able to yeah to separate fingers yeah out like a yeah. warm up kind of thing or like a I call the fundamentals kind of the the basic movement yeah so just to be sure that you're able to to do that because yeah. if you're not even able to do one two three four yeah so what so I, have I do have a problem with that when I'm when I'm doing like. Because I, when I do arpeggios, I avoid any arpeggios that have these two fingers together. Ah. And I also avoid barring arpeggios as Bar, well. Yeah, yeah. So that did actually firmly push me into the sort of minor and major seven arpeggio realm, which is kind of why I end up with, with that sort of tonality with a lot of my arpeggios that I play. Um, mainly because of, you know, struggling with fingerings and stuff Avoiding like that. This, yeah. But I can do the, the, the spider exercise thing, but when it came to doing like sweet picked arpeggios, for some reason... It doesn't work. Yeah, because this finger is longer than this one, so it was like trying to get this one to sit... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, well, but ma my, maybe my, not Steve Vai's one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. But like I've said... I've or said, Oliver um, Holdsworth, right? He had like a... Yeah, the stretching was just insane. <laughs> like, I can't even yeah. think about that. But yeah, my playing is just a... I said this actually in an interview not so long ago, but it was funny because as it came out of my mouth, it sort of perfectly summed up my playing. And it's just, my playing is just a, a, a series of um, obstacles that I've had to get over and then ignore that's that. And then basically what's left is what... Oh, that's cool. That's just a, a nice series of like, you know... That's a good way to see it. Yeah. It, yeah. Because, totally, because... Different guitar players, different people, different hands, different, they've been through different kind of exercises yeah. and whatever. And then you try to copy them, but exactly. So you just get what you're able to do it. Yeah. You know, I am able to do that. Even like the Mark Friedman solos, there are a lot of stuff I don't do it. And I'm even I don't try to do mm. because it's not for my hands. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't bother trying to, to play. I try to sound close, you know. Yeah. But I don't bother trying to because it's not my hands, it's not the person. So why I want to be... But you have to be like, comfortable as well because yeah. going back to what we were saying before, when you're running about on stage, you want to be... Yes. You don't want to be thinking, about, oh God, you know. Yeah. I have that with a couple of Jason solos because he plays a lot of sextuplet runs in the, in the same direction, mm. descending, right? Mm. But I 
there's a Petrucci sort of like approach to playing stuff like that. Well, it's still a six note pattern, but it's five using five notes instead of six. Oh. So like there's a solo uh, for a song called Inside Out where I've I did start playing it like Jason, but then like last couple of nights I've worked out a, a slightly you easier did a way. Petrucci way. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, neck pick up kind of like da 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 da. You know, kind of do it slightly, but cool. tonality wise, it's still exactly the same. Uh -huh, it's just yeah. a slight change in yeah. the pattern. And then it's easier for you. And Again, then yeah, yourself. because it's super consistent every night. And and you know when you're playing somewhere you know, 10, 12,000 people, you yeah. want stuff that will translate. Exactly. You know, because you want everyone to hear what you're yes. doing. You That's don't want it to clear. just get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And you want to feel, you know, But Tom Tam was cool, like he was just like, look, you know, don't worry about getting it exact, just yeah. just do your thing. And, be yourself, and, and be course, yourself. Yeah, be yourself. I mean, obviously play the songs as they're meant to be played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they've been really like cool, actually. Yeah. But I want to know about uh, composition. Okay. Because composition, as perform for me, like performance on stage, you know, like big stage, would be the ultimate way to show that you did a good wo practicing work, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, composition would be the ultimate way to show that you understand music. Yeah. You yeah. know, you you have a you have a voice. You want to say something, or you know the scales. You wanna, you know how to transmit your feelings. Mm. If you wanna, even if you. Knowing the names or not, let's say you want to play it darker and you want to use a free jam mode or something. Yeah, yeah. Or knowing the names or not, but it is the ultimate way to express yourself yeah, through definitely. music. Yeah. Right. So how did you develop your composition? Well, because, by the way, are great. You have great albums, by the way. Oh, cheers, man. Uh, <laughs> beautiful music is very, very, very cool. Very Thanks. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I f to be honest with you, I think like uh, after a while as a guitar player, I mean you'll know this as well because you've done, you know, a bunch of that stuff yourself. Yeah. Like especially with like No Gravity, which is yeah. one of my favourite albums of yours. But um, yeah, it's like sooner or later you're going to have to sort of like put the technique away mm -hmm. and start finding a, a a vehicle for that to exist. Because it's great if you can play at 400 BPM, but if you haven't got a song or you know you haven't got anything. So like I, I suppose I, when I thought that maybe I was going to start trying to put albums out, I tried to have this sort of how am I going to present this in a way that I feel that's comfortable for me and it works with the way that my mind works with writing, and it normally just comes from like listening to songs. You know, this is probably why I'm like a fan of bands like you know, Nickelback or Five Finger Death Punch or you know the stuff that that has like more um, stripped down. Uh, song structures and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I mean, even with bands like Killswitch Engage, they kind of do it as well, even though they, they fill it with, you know, slightly more uh, aggressive down pick riffs and stuff like that. But they have like the chorus parts, which yeah, are like yeah. the opening bits of like uh, the songs. So I guess I kind of went down that route. I started having like these verse sections, which would be the kind of, you know, semi-shreddy mm -hmm. bits. And then you'd have like the chorus sections, which would be like your reoccurring theme throughout the song. Yeah, and then so you'd have like a solo section. So it'd almost be like a, a vocal song, but, you know, take the vocals out and just put the guitar Yeah, on. so that's the way you think of it. Structure wise, yeah. like a vocal, like a song, like a vocal song, and then you just yeah. imagine and I'm not hugely that's the into verse, like that's the chorus, stuff. Uh, that's uh, the solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I listen to a lot of like progressive stuff, but I don't write that way. Because I feel like, you know, the guitar is such an, Im an involved thing to listen to constantly. So like you put an album on for like 50 minutes and you've got guitar, 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 yeah. guitar. Yeah. You know, I feel like if it, if it was shred, coupled with like odd time signatures, coupled with like these really abstract riffs, I, I, I dare say it'd be difficult for anybody to get through a whole album of that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, I feel like it'd be difficult to convey any kind of like emotional ups and downs with that as well, you know what I mean? So I try and um, present my guitar playing in a way that I can get over the feel that I want to get over and get it with a good balance of like technique as well, but also songs that even if people didn't play guitar, they, they could enjoy. They yeah, could enjoy course, it. Yeah, course. exactly. Yeah, being a, a big fan of guitar myself, yeah, I have a hard time to listen to guitar. <laughs> yeah, guitar well, also, I, I'm pretty because, sure all of us do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. And um, composing songs, as a, as a songwriter would do, you know. With yeah. The, verses and chorus and uh, bringing back the same motif somehow so yeah it makes sense has a concept yeah exactly and, yeah. Uh, yeah but it gives you a nice direction but it's um, not easy 
when do you know that your idea is good enough to be a song and to put in an album? Um, when I've probably heard it about 500 times after I've finished it and I, if I'm still not bored then of it, okay. then it's cool. Yeah, yeah. So I get that every song that I do has like a, a process of where I've just heard it so much that, I mean, it's not because I get used to it because I do have songs where I've had them and I'm just like, oh, I'm not yeah, really okay. feeling it. You know, after a while, I'm just like, I don't see the appeal of this. Um, so like I might write 15, 20 songs or whatever and then possibly 10 or 11 might Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But even be before, hard, like, yeah. or before that, when you have, let's say, I don't know how you do. How do you do? Like, you write a riff and then put it in, a, in your phone, the idea, or you have uh, no. I normally you have, have like some sort of uh, key base set up somewhere okay. where I can I can do it. But but then you just have a, some kind of a library of a, ideas. No, I just I don't start do a song. pro. I just do the whole thing. Like the whole thing I, right if away. I get an idea. I'll just do the. Oh, okay, thing. cool. Like so, I have like the drums and, and then, yeah, yeah, because. I don't like playing to anything that's like raw or sounds unmixed. So I have mm -hmm. like these templates set up where everything sounds that if I just recorded it and the general levels after the song's finished, it would, you could probably put it out in the state that it's in. Oh, okay. And because I, otherwise I can't really hear what the song needs if I don't hear it in mm. a, in a semi finished state. Got you know it. I mean? Yeah. Very cool. So. But if you have a, okay, you're, you're jamming or something or practicing or, and then, oh, that's a cool riff. Right. Well, that's a cool melody. Oh, yeah. So how do you do from that? So you go straight to the cue base and start writing the whole song? You don't have this? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll just, I'll lose the... I'll I'll revelations. Lose, yeah. <laughs> no, but I lose like, the, the idea. So I'm like, I have to get this down. So and then you, you, you're, you're, so you have a good idea and then normally you start doing other ideas that follows up that first idea and then you have the song. Well, normally, like this. normally with an album, one song will kind of map out where the rest of it is ah, going to go. Yeah, yeah. And it generally tends to be like a heavy song that, mm -hmm. that kind of has a lot of my ideas thrown into it. And then I'm like, okay, I like the vibe of this. How many different ways can I present the same sort of vibe? So I don't like these solo albums where like, it, it I, I don't mind like outside influence and stuff, like obviously bringing that in, but then there are guitar instrument albums that do exist where you have like a jazz song, a country mm -hmm. song, a metal song, yeah, yeah. A, and I'm like, I can't do that because yeah. I'm just like, well, why don't you just pick a genre and just do that? <laughs> if you want to do a country album, do that. If you want to do a metal album, do that. But yeah, I feel yeah. like as a as a listening experience, it's much nicer to. Would you think that the, well, I don't know which album would be that, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't want to like name any albums because yeah. you know, and it doesn't mean they're necessarily bad, but yeah. I think for me, I'm much more of the mind to like if I'm going to put a record on in the car and I'm going to drive somewhere I just want to Do turn it same, up and have and it have like the a, same vibe throughout the album yeah exactly and, and just you know because I'm all about like energy and creating something mm -hmm. where like it sounds like a tank's coming through your oh, yeah, yeah. you know rather than I don't know kind of bringing it all back and doing some sort of jazz lounge thing which I wouldn't be very good at anyway yeah. so I, you know. we were talking about before you said you were a mix of uh your early influences like a Zach Wilde with a it's probably mids. a mixture of like Zach Wilde, Petrucci and Andy Timmons I'd say like oh yeah because I like so I you have the best of like of <laughs> melody you know Petrucci is very melodic as well very great composer I mean they're all yeah they're and, all and all really Zach Wilde too you know it's like well it's, they have it's that, Zach that, Wilde's that. attitude that like attracted me to like his playing I mean obviously he's a great player and like the the the, the just the aggressive. Very, compo very good composer, great yeah, composer yeah. with the Aussie songs and stuff. But I just, I, I just love this sort of like attitude of like, ah, just grab a guitar, yeah, plug it like... in, grab a beer, and just you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's from Zach Wilde. Maybe the not Twitchy now. was like a the school, was the, the school of... like perfect yeah, technique. He, you know, even he was like cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, he still is, but it's like, I just. I like the fact that he had elements of, say, like that sort of Zach Wilde in his playing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with certain things, but it is, I mean, dare I say it, a little bit more refined, obviously, because of the prog aspect of... of um, yeah, well, of the music of his playing. Yeah, I mean, not to take anything away from Zach Wilde, but like, honestly, I, you know, with Petrucci's kind of like intervallic play and stuff and mm -hmm. how he would, he, he would like landscape his playing a little mm -hmm, bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and the Andy Timmons? I just, I, do you know what, he's one of those guys that... I don't think you can define by any one guitar technique. You know, like some guys where they're just killer alternate pickers or they're killer legato players or, you know, or they're, they're a good mix or whatever. But with him, he just, 
it, it's almost like a, just a, an extension of his own like voice. He'll just mm-hmm. play anything that oh, it yeah. takes to just get that song yeah, yeah, out yeah. there. And I've always admired that about his playing, especially the first time I heard Cry For You. I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is just it's beautiful. It sounds it sounds like someone really like I don't know yeah. putting out their emotion. Yes, yes, you know. yes. What about the the older guys like Jeff Beck? What that would be, you know, when I talk about Andy Timmons, kind of brings me back to the. Yeah, I mean, I, I must Beck. admit, I, I'm probably indirectly influenced by a lot of older players, but not but ever not, really sat down. You never and, went no. to. I mean, I've heard uh, uh, a bunch of Jeff Beck stuff, and I have enjoyed it, but I suppose from my well, own page, taste, all like the the British ones. Come yeah, on. I mean, I, you know, going going back that far, probably. No, I no, mean, no. I'm not a huge yeah. Zeppelin. Which you for that? Or, I'm not really a huge Hendrix fan either, but that's not because I, I, I think it's terrible or anything. I just it didn't buzz me to learn that stuff. Yeah. So I was like, I just found other stuff that I enjoyed more, and that's yeah, of course, that's of it, course, yeah, yeah. So that's great. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, I think it's well, great. Have a good show uh, tonight, yeah. mate. Have I'll a great show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now we'll probably have your ninety minutes. Practice going through the songs. Yeah, I'll gonna have to do yeah. that later on. I'll get my guitars off of. Um, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. That's what we do here too. You know, go through the solos and go through the, the songs. Yeah, that's know. right. We can all hear you down the hallway, like. Yeah. Oh, yesterday away. we were like, <laughs> yesterday we were like jamming. Yeah. We don't do that often, but it was. Cool no, it's to, cool. To do. Charlie said to me, "Said is that jazz I can hear? Like, what's going on? Because yeah. I think Doc was in here as well, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Bad Wolf, yeah. 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 He came. Yeah. Yeah. So you're more, you are more than welcome to come and jam. Yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm right? kind of, I felt like I was. So you just, if you're here, just come, bring a guitar, and it's like, yeah, yeah, that's I will do, I will. All right, yeah. and then put the camera and show to you guys as well. Right? <laughs> nice one. Cool. Cheers, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Cool. Uh.